Can we all just stop and talk about the Dyatlov Pass incident real quick? Because I think science may have solved what happened and we, we need to talk about it. The Dyatlov Pass incident occurred almost 65 years ago on February 2nd, 1959, when nine Soviet hikers died in the Ural Mountains. By the time they dug the tent out, they realized that the tent was intentionally slashed to pieces, yet all items inside the tent were left in perfect order. That was probably the first eerie observation. Food was still laid out as if the group was about to sit down to eat, along with the rest of the group's clothes, cameras, and journals, which they had brought along to document the trek. A hundred feet downwind of the tent were distinct footprints of eight or nine people, and these footprints were walking toward the tree line. Some of these footprints were only wearing socks. Some were just straight up barefoot. Then the next morning, the searchers found the first round of bodies. Georgi and Yuri Doroshenko were lying under a cedar tree at the edge of the forest, lying dead next to the remnants of a fire, wearing only their underwear. And that's when some really strange things were found. Georgi had blackened fingers and third degree burns on his shin and foot, while Yuri had a chunk of flesh inside of his mouth that he had bitten off from his right hand. All four bodies were bruised and scratched up all over. That's when the key discovery was made that the slashes on the tent were made from the inside. Something caused these nine hikers to cut their way through this tent and flee into the night. So who or what made them do this? Two studies published data that is probably the closest we'll ever get to finding out exactly what happened the night of February 2nd, 1959. The Dyatlov of Nine reached Dead Mountain at around 5 p.m. and then immediately get to work cutting deeply into the slope to make their camp. But what the group likely didn't realize is they had cut into a wind slab, which is an accumulation of hard snow compacted by the wind. And by removing this big chunk of slope, there was now no support for the snow slab above, causing it to break off later in the night. This wind slab likely weighed a thousand pounds or more when it fell on the tent and probably caused some of those catastrophic injuries to the group members while simultaneously pinning the tent down. This prevented the group from being able to grab their boots or clothing and forcing them to cut their way out of the tent to escape. After this, the group likely fled together towards the tree line, hence why we see all nine footprints heading towards the forest. And given the various states of undress when the group fled, some most certainly died of hypothermia sooner than others. The burned skin on Georgi and Yuri Doshenko came from desperately trying to stay warm by the fire. And it's very likely that at this point, the group decides to split up. So Jatlov, Zina, and Slobodin likely attempted to go back to the tent to grab clothes and supplies, while the others stayed to build a snow den so they couldn't stay in their tent overnight anymore. Jatlov, Zina, and Slobodin, as we know, don't make it to the tent. They die on the way from the brutal conditions. Back in the forest, the other four unfortunately don't realize the snow tunnel they were digging was on top of a stream that wasn't frozen. So the snow collapsed from the digging, causing the four to fall into the rocky stream and be buried under 15 feet of snow. And that's that. 